Hello and welcome to our video on the changes for keeping children safe in education 2023. We're looking today at the 1st of September release. If you've seen our video from June, there's not an awful lot that has changed since then, but we have updated the video and the slides to make sure we've got the right paragraph numbers and the odd word here or there that has changed. But substantively, it's the same document as before. If you want to use the slides I'll be showing in your own training, you're more than welcome. So if you head to the link at the bottom of the screen, you can find those slides uh, to use yourself. You can download them and incorporate with anything else that you need it for. But also you'll find our other resources around KC, such as our quizzes on various themes. They've been updated so you can use them throughout the year whenever you want to check up, and make sure that everyone has really understood what they need to. And beyond the changes, the general ones and the themes, there's also one on the management of safeguarding, which is great for safeguarding leads, but also for governors. There's also our 13 community languages that we've translated part one into, and that's great for EAL staff to make sure that everyone really understands the principles of safeguarding. So we'll dive straight in to the major change for 2023, which is around filtering and monitoring. That's nothing new in KC per se. It's been around for a few years, but over the last couple, we've seen more and more mentions added to it. And this year it's really come up the agenda. So what do we need to be aware of? The key things are underlined that you can see here, that the DSL is now responsible, lead responsibility for filtering and monitoring. And that's quite a change because even though you've been asked to consider this in recent years and have a greater understanding, it's really key that you do now. So that's the clearest message we've had for years that filtering and monitoring really are safeguarding. Safeguarding first, not technology first. So you will, of course, need to work more closely with your technical teams this year. That's not to say they don't remain vital because they really understand what's going on and can help you implement everything. But in terms of decisions and the rationale behind filtering and monitoring really need to be safeguarding driven safeguarding first. So do please think about that. We'll talk about the standards that are referenced in a moment. But while we're on roles, bear in mind as well that you need to have a governor or a trustee who is looking at filtering and monitoring with you as well. So that's something if you haven't thought about already to really consider quickly uh, as the year gets underway. Now, what else have we got in there? Um, it's worth mentioning that filtering and monitoring has been spread around KC in quite a few different places, just to really highlight the importance that it needs to be covered in training for all staff, what all staff need to be aware of, um, and making sure that they too know that this is a safeguarding tool that you're going to be looking at a bit more closely. And of course, you need their eyes and ears to help alert you to issues, problems or anything that might be improved or if they've heard from students trying to bypass the systems as well. Other than that, there is an awful lot that needs to be done as well in terms of checking policies, making sure that they align with each other. They've been updated. So as you're looking through those um, with governors as well, do please be aware of this particular issue. Now, the main change beyond the responsibility comes back to a different DFE document, which is the standards for filtering and monitoring. These were published in March of 23, um, but they have been incorporated into KC as well. It tells you to go and look at those standards um, and lists the high level ones here as well. But do please remember, these are just the titles. There's quite a lot of detail and action that needs to be taken beyond the four bullet points that you can see on the screen. But that's a very good place to start to get your head around what do you need to do. We'll come back a bit more to what you can do to start following those standards and what you can change, where you can find training and so on in a moment. But just also a mention as well that we are doing this in order to protect children. There's a new mention you can see underlined on the screen in terms of really considering particular vulnerabilities. And that's useful to consider as we think about filtering and monitoring as systems that should not just be the same for everyone in school, but help you with different groups of pupils as well. But why is that important? It's not just because it's come into KC, um, with more mentions, but we do need to remember that it really does have 
real life consequences. As you can see on the screen, there was a, a very sad story that really does come back to what's happening in school and the coroner was mentioning the systems that were or were not operational in school. So this is not just a technical procedure, but really, really important. So as I said, you do not need to start worrying about having to take on absolutely everything and understanding really technical matters. You can still work really closely with your tech teams, but there are key things to be aware of. And two brief ways that you can be helped with that. One, we've got a 30 minute short course for DSLs and SLT around specifically filtering. We don't talk too much about monitoring, mainly on filtering, where you can come in in half an hour, take away lots of questions, documents, things to do, next steps that you can carry out to help you understand your side, which is not about becoming a technician, but really understanding what you need to do. So come along just for half an hour and we'll go through some of those. And also we reference this page. You can see the link at the bottom, safefiltering.ldrafel.net, where we've added lots of videos, guidance, templates for reviews and checks, and all these things that you need to be doing when you really delve into the standards for filtering and monitoring. So let's move on to some of the other areas. Beyond filtering and monitoring, there have not been major changes to KC, but there are a few things definitely worth having a look at. So children missing from education, children absent from education. There's been some terminology changes to this, but not everywhere, as you can see a few examples on the screen. Um, so just be aware that potentially that's going to be a change in future, but both terms are now being used. But do notice as well, they've added in a couple of places the word prolonged. So that is not just repeat issues of not being in school, but it could just be the first one when that's particularly long. That's something that you want to think of. And I think this just highlights to us uh, something that we're already doing, but just to be aware that one prolonged absence is also significant and worth looking at and taking action if we can as well. There's a reminder about the new marriage laws. It is now illegal to get married before the age of 18. Um, that's a significant change. Um, and of course, that will affect those of us with older students in our schools as well. And a reminder as well um, that coercion is not the only factor here as well. So even if whether it's parents or other adults um, have not been seen to coerce young people into getting married, it remains illegal. So that's a good reminder in terms of legislation that's out there and has changed. So that's just to bring it into line with uh, what has happened there as well. Now we're nearly done, but we're going to look at some minor language changes as well, where the odd word here or there has been changed. And you might not spot it yourself when you go through the document, but we thought it might be useful as you go through the year, perhaps to take one by one and think about, could that start an all staff discussion um, to help you understand really what's driving safeguarding? What are our opinions? What's behind what we're thinking about when we talk about safeguarding? So the word discipline has not disappeared from KC, but it has been removed in various places and re replaced with sanctions, for example. Like I say, it's not gone away, but I think that's particularly interesting uh, to consider. Why might that be? Does it have something to do with what we think about in society when we hear the word discipline? Traditional views of that and what we as schools are trying to do. So maybe that's just something to consider either yourself or with all staff, but have a think about that um, as well. Here's another change that you can see on the screen. But the word vulnerable has been removed from a section about extremism and radicalization. And of course, all young people are vulnerable um, if they are under 18 because they are children. But it's really key that we don't get in our minds when we're talking about grooming of any sort, not just for radicalization, that actually all children could be vulnerable, not just groups that we might classically think of as more vulnerable than the average student. So I think that's quite helpful in terms of considering our language and who we're trying to protect, because every form of harm that we're trying to safeguard against could come into play for all of our students and often um, 
we can get into the trap of thinking it will only affect certain student groups. Another relatively minor change on the page itself is the addition of so-called before honour-based abuse. And that's really key as well in terms of framing how we think about safeguarding issues as well. We can't remove the term because it's still in legislation and referred to in other guidance, but it is helpful to always consider that this form of abuse has nothing to do with true honour. So just adding so-called can actually be helpful to remind ourselves each time that this is not really what it's about. Another change is that both online and offline has been added in various new places. We're not going to list them all and you will doubtless have noticed that including online is something that's been added over the past few years to various different places. But it's really key as well to remember that certain vulnerabilities can be amplified uh, in the online space where things can be made a little more binary and polarised. Um, so it's really key to be aware um, that harm occurs online and offline in all areas throughout the document. But equally, when we are talking about children at greater risk of harm in general, it's really key to always come back to remember online elements too, which I'm sure lots of you are doing. Moving on in this paragraph, which was already in the document about children being educated from home and removed from role, there's an extra quote that you can see at the end about where the child has an EHCP um, that local authorities need to review this plan um, as the child goes off role. So it's worth getting in touch with your local authority to see what form uh, this will take. Um, and equally just being aware of this because it's something that the LA needs to do I know that you will want to be supporting these children. Um, so knowing what others need to do can often be really helpful. In this paragraph two, it looks like two very minor changes, adding including online and for all staff. But even though it's only tiny, I do think it's worth stopping to think about as well when we are trying to create the kind of environment in school that's going to deter uh, poor behaviour, damaging behaviour or even abuse uh, from staff. It's really key that everyone plays their role in terms of staying vigilant. And also another of those reminders about how the online space can also be key as well. For most schools, rental income for your premises will be a significant income stream. And then we've been aware and there's been a section in KC about safeguarding when it comes to those organisations on your premises for a while. But there've been a couple of additions. One is to flag the helpful guidance document you can see on the left, which is not just relevant for those external organisations to read, but also for you as well. But beyond that, uh, there's the addition in the purple that you can see on the right there, about where allegations might be raised to you as a school for something that happened uh, when other organisations are using your premises. And just a reminder to follow your standard policies, but also to get involved and inform the LADO, uh, who will doubtless be of invaluable help in any case. So do just be aware of that um, and consider, is there something in your policies that you need to change, both in general or for policies as they relate to these external organisations? When it comes to safer recruitment, there was a new paragraph added to the 2022 version, which you can see uh, here with the latest change, which was about carrying out an online search on candidates during recruitment. Now, since then, the department has clarified that they did mean a simple search, for example, using a search engine, not trying to collect myriad social media accounts and uh, snooping and stalking, but a simple online search to see uh, what comes up. So that was really useful during last year. But as schools have been discussing it this year, this uh, edition in red has been put in there about informing shortlisted candidates what you're actually doing. And I think that's really helpful as well for making sure that you've got a process in place in terms of standardising it, not doing too much or too little and making sure this is all documented and is fair for all candidates, mainly by being the same for each candidate. And that was it, except for to mention Annex F. So the Annex at the end of KC always gives you the list of substantive changes. We've talked about some today that have been on this list, 
and some that were not because they stuck out to us. And it's really key, I think, to have a look there and think, OK, for the DfE, what is important? What are the key changes uh, this year as well? Because doubtless Ofsted too will be looking at these and perhaps they might indicate the direction of travel and what's going to happen in future as well. So that was all. Thank you very much. Do be aware that throughout the year, we need to be checking back on everyone's understanding of KC. You can come back to this video, the slides and the quizzes and other things I mentioned at kcsie.aljafel.net. And of course, we need to be ensuring that we're aware of the whole document and that we're not just thinking about the changes each time and refreshing our memories, whether we're safeguarding leads or all staff, depending on which section uh, we are looking at. But thank you. I hope that was useful. Do come and watch again or download the slides if you want to use them for your own purposes. And thank you for listening.